Today, we're going to talk about crop steering, a concept necessary to get the most out of your plant's potential. Let's get growing. The ideas we've covered so far in this series are fundamental to achieving ideal cultivation conditions at any level of experience. The practical application of crop steering that we are discussing today is normally reserved for advanced growers with equipment that allows for deeper control of their environment and irrigation systems. Our industry has the tools available to deliver precise irrigation, hyper-focused climate control, and sophisticated sensors that can actively monitor and manipulate every aspect of cultivation imaginable, much of which remains practically inaccessible to the majority of growers. However, simply understanding the principles of crop steering can help you conceptualize plant growth stages and understand plant response to varying conditions. So when we talk about crop steering, we are referring to a collection of techniques that manipulate different environmental variables in order to cue specific growth responses from a plant. These environmental variables will include anything from light intensity, to vapor pressure deficit and carbon dioxide concentrations and everything in between. For the purposes of this video, we will focus mainly on variations of irrigation delivery and its impact on plant growth. In terms of plant growth responses, there are two to consider, vegetative and generative. It's important to note that we should be careful not to confuse the concept of crop steering with the actual vegetative end bloom phases. Crop steering in any direction can happen in any phase of a plant's life depending on the circumstance. Let's now take a moment to understand key differences between vegetative and generative steering. Over countless years of evolution, plants have grown accustomed to signals from nature that tell them that it's either time to grow its leaves, shoots, and roots, or that it's time to develop flowers and fruits. When we steer a plant vegetatively, we are signaling that the plant has no immediate threat to its life and is essentially enjoying a stress-free environment. Under these conditions, our plant will focus its energy on rapid root development, stem structuring, and robust leaf growth. Environmental conditions that promote vegetative steering include lower light intensity, higher humidities, and air temperature, and moderate CO2 concentrations. Use stacks in conjunction with your appropriate base to provide ideal nutrition and leverage a stronger vegetative response. Generative steering, on the other hand, signals the plant in a completely different way. While generatively steering, we are essentially threatening our plant with drought conditions. Our plant's stress response is to focus on a method of survival, reproduction. This means an increase in pre-flowering sites for a higher probability of pollination. Environmental conditions that promote generative steering include increased light intensity, lower humidities, and air temperature, and increased CO2 concentrations. Use shine in conjunction with your appropriate base to provide ideal nutrition and leverage a stronger generative response. Now that we have a general understanding of vegetative and generative steering, let's pivot to what we can do in the root zone to steer our crop in either direction. Let's first consider volumetric water content. VWC is most often expressed as a percentage of available water in relation to the substrate's field capacity or ability to hold water. For a reminder on what field capacity is, watch our episode on substrates. 
When steering our plants, it's important to align our environments for either vegetative or generative growth, as it will affect other variables like water and nutrient uptake. Relative humidity and leaf temperature, for example, directly influences the rate of transpiration or demand for water to evaporate from the leaves. More moisture in the air means less transpiration, which results in more water remaining in the substrate. We want to consider that while vegetatively steering, we want higher saturation in our substrate, anywhere from 40 to 65% field capacity. To reach this objective in our climate tuned for vegetative steering and a lower rate of transpiration, we want more frequent irrigation events at lower volumes, up to 3% of substrate volume. Alternatively, remembering our environment cues for generative steering and its increase of demand for transpiration will adjust our irrigation events to simulate drought conditions. We want to allow our volumetric water content to decrease significantly. To achieve these conditions, we'll have to lower the frequency of our irrigation events, but increase the volume of our shot sizes to ensure we don't cause irreparable damage from wilting. In previous episodes, we've discussed electric conductivity in solutions and understand that to be the concentration in which we mix our nutrients in water. In terms of crop steering, this will be referred to as our feed EC. Substrate EC alternatively refers to the salinity of the available water content inside the growing media. For example, as we steer vegetatively and adjust our climates for more moisture in the air, the transpiration demand decreases. This means that less water is required to be evaporated through the leaves and will remain in the substrate, making nutrient more easily absorbed by the plant. This will cause substrate EC to fall. Well, generatively steering, we will adjust our space to be drier. This will accelerate transpiration demand and osmotic pressure will increase in the substrate, forcing the plant to absorb water at a faster rate than nutrient. Without replenishing the media with solution, the substrate EC will climb. Be sure to revisit our episode on photosynthesis for a refresher on the process of transpiration. Broadly, we'll want lower substrate ECs for vegetative steering and higher substrate ECs for generative steering. In addition to the considerations we've discussed so far, irrigation intervals are key to proper crop steering. We can break this down into two major concepts to understand. Frequency and duration. Frequency is the amount of irrigation events in a day. As already mentioned, vegetative steering calls for higher frequency, while generative steering demands less frequent irrigation events. Feed duration represents the volume of water per irrigation event. Using pressure compensated drip emitters as highlighted in our episode on fertigation allows for the uniform delivery of nutrient solution. By simply increasing the duration of our irrigation event, we increase the volume of nutrient solution delivered. And to reiterate, vegetative steering requires lower durations while generative steering requires higher durations. Most schools of thought on crop steering commonly break down irrigation into four phases. Extended dryback, ramp up, maintenance, overnight dryback. These phases are often represented on a chart much like this one. The extended dryback phase is the period starting immediately when the lights come on and terminates the first irrigation event. This phase continues the dryback started from the previous day. The ramp up phase begins with the first irrigation event and is completed through gradual and incremental irrigation events. 
The phase is complete once the substrate reaches the target volumetric water content. The maintenance phase begins once the target volumetric water content is achieved and continues through to the last irrigation event. This phase is intended for the grower to adjust substrate EC by manipulating frequency and duration of irrigation events. Finally, the overnight dryback phase begins with the last irrigation event and continues through the night cycle until the lights come on the next day. Shortening and extending your dryback periods will have effects on your volumetric water content and your substrate EC. Using this model for planning your irrigation events will give you a point of reference from which to make adjustments to your program. While this video has key fundamentals that are important to achieving a better understanding of our plants, these principles are meant to serve as a starting point to exploring the concepts we've only just touched upon. Proper tools and full consideration of your unique genetics and environment are going to be necessary in order to fully apply the potential of crop steering to unlock your plant's genetic expression. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Grower's Notebook. So like and subscribe and hit that notification button to stay up to date with the latest content from Hydroponic Research. And don't forget to leave a comment below about what topics or information you want us to cover. I'm Melanie and thank you for watching Grower's Notebook.